Hi, good morning everyone. Thank you very much for coming today. My name is Joe Sorrell. I'm the Vice President of Sun Plastic. Um, what I'm talking about today obviously is purging compounds. But more importantly, what I'm really talking about today is money. And money that's very likely in your factory now and very accessible to you with very small changes. So as I'm going through this presentation and talking about purging compound, please keep in mind what we're talking about is savings. Saving time, saving scrap, saving money. Uh, there's going to be two major parts in my presentation. The first part is, if you will, the what. When we're talking about purging, what are we talking about? Uh, what is all encompassed in purging? And secondly, how? How can we reduce the things that we want to reduce? Reduce time wasted, reduce scrap wasted, reduce expenses. So what I hope that you all leave with today is something that you can go home to, to your factory tomorrow with, apply procedures, changes that will make a difference immediately. Uh, in some cases, uh, when we talk about purging compounds, about a commercial purging compound, something like Ossipine or others that you purchase on the market. But keep in mind, many or most of these practices can be done with something that you're making in your factory, with regrind, there are other ways to use these steps, so they don't apply only to a commercial purging compound. Uh, very quickly about our company, uh, Sun Plastec is the makers and uh, the distributor Clean purging compound. Ossiclean was developed by the Asahi Kase Chemicals Company of Japan, one of the world's largest chemicals and material sciences companies. So first, when we're talking about purging, what are we talking about? It's very important to understand that when you're talking about purging, it's not the time that the purge compound is in the machine whether you're using regrind or scrap or virgin resin. Purge compound or purging time is from your last good part to your next first good part. So, for example, if you're making bottle caps and you're going from red to white. So when you take that last sellable red cap off the line, from that moment to when you have that first sellable white cap off the line, that's your purging time. Included in those costs are purge material costs, whether it's regrind, whether it's a uh, commercial purging compound, your scrapped purge piles, your scrap material costs, and of course, and perhaps most importantly, the lost profit. So while you're making off-spec material, while you're making purge piles, you're not making something that you can sell and make a profit from. So that profit, that lost opportunity cost, needs to be included in your total um, calculation of your purging costs. very important, of course, to measure these costs, and we have a cost savings analysis that we use to do so. These are actual case studies that our customers have uh, given us to show what they've done and how they've improved their process. In the two columns here, you'll see injection molding on the left and extrusion on the right. In the case of injection molding example, we've taken on a 100-ton press a simple acetal change that used to require pulling the screw in order to get the machine clean. Well, of course, the customer wanted to avoid screw pulls if possible. So they used, uh, in, in this case, our EX grade, and you can see the time savings there, two hours. So to pull the screw, manually clean it, replace it, and get to the next good part, took two hours on this 100-ton machine. By using Ossiclean, not pulling the screw, they were able to reduce that change over time to 10 minutes. So when you look down there, the material cost for us clean was about $22 versus no material cost in the case of manual cleaning. But when you look at the total cost, the difference is almost $100 or about $100 for that change. So you can imagine the productivity if you're doing one change a day, two changes a day on one machine, and now multiply that by a number of machines. The savings add up very, very quickly. In the extrusion uh, example there, we're going from a black hips to a white ABS. Uh, before using a purging compound and adjusting the purging procedures, this changeover was taking five hours. We were able to help them bring it down to three quarters hours. 
again, if you look down to the total cost of merge, there's a savings of about $422 for one simple change. So, again, uh, using a virgin resin before, I'm not sure which resin it was, but let's say it's a dollar, a pound, or whatever it might have been, Using a, in this case, a commercial purchase compound, looking at the price per pound, may look to be, oh, Persian compound is very expensive. But when you look at the total cost, it's clear that not using something designed specifically to clean the machine is really what's expensive. So what is Persian compound? We have seen it all. Our customers have told us very different, very many different kinds of things that they're using from Persian compound, from Thai to popcorn to cola. Uh, generally speaking, companies are using regrind, virgin resin, uh, sometimes cast acrylic, or on the bottom there, a commercial Persian compound. What I'm going to talk about today can be applied across the structure. Uh, I'd like to point out, though, at this point, there's one uh, specific exception to what I'm going to talk about today. And that is uh, chemical purges. Uh, some companies sell a purgeon compound that works on a chemical reaction basis. What I'm talking about today does not apply to that. So if that's of interest to you, I recommend talk to your chemical purge supplier and get instructions for them. But that's kind of a different animal. What we're going to talk today is mechanical purging. Whether it's commercial a commercial purge compound or something that you're using regrind or scrap, uh, it's going to work on a mechanical basis. Why is it necessary to use a Persian compound as opposed to the next resin? What you see here, those thin lines on the screw, you see a blue and a red line. What, hop, what this is representing is a color change from blue to red. So often what will happen is, if you do a simple color change, run that red resin through, after some period of time of purple resin, you'll see that blue resin, excuse me, the red resin coming out, and it looks clean. But almost certainly what's really happening is that red resin is layering over that blue resin to some extent. So you will have pockets of blue resin, sometimes behind the screw flights or elsewhere in that machine, that are in, still in the machine. And you can run red product that's good on spec product for some amount of time before that blue resin starts to come out again. And I think a lot of you have probably had the experience where you're running good parts for hours or shifts at a time, and suddenly you see another color coming out. And you wonder, what happened? Where is this color coming from? Well, that's what's happening. So if you're not cleaning the machine, it's very likely that you're leaving that previous resin in there. different purging compounds, and I'm not going to talk about this in detail, um, but they work on different principles. Ours happens to work on a material affinity principle, which means our compound was specifically designed to have affinity to resin and deposits, and specifically designed not to have an affinity to metal. So it's going to go through your machine, it's going to pick up deposits and resins, and then when you're ready to push it out with the next resin, it's not going to stick into the machine like some other products might. The next uh, slide was actually given to us by a prospective customer. They were evaluating um, different methods to achieve greater productivity. They were having a lot of problems. Uh, as you can see on the left side of the chart there, this is a scrap rate. The defect percentage along the left side, you'll see was as high as 16%. This is a large automotive tier one supplier. So a 16% scrap rate represented a fantastic amount of waste. They weren't making any money at all when they were running that kind of scrap. What they were doing was changing screws when they needed to clean. And you can see that each time they changed the screw, the scrap rates went down dramatically. But after several months, it went back up. Even after changing the screw, this scrap rate was still in the 3 to 4% range, or as high as 6%. Still very, very high scrap rate for a company that's running such large, expensive parts. In October, you can see the big red box there. They wrote revised purging procedure using Asafina starter. 